Good morning. I welcome you to this session of fluid machines. In the last class, we discussed the basic principle of operation for a reciprocating pump and we have also discussed that how the acceleration heads during suction and delivery strokes are developed due to non-uniform motion of the piston. That during the suction stroke, acceleration and deceleration takes place for the piston. Similarly, the acceleration and deceleration takes place in the delivery strokes because of which uh, the piston or the pump as a whole has to develop additional heads over and above that of the theoretical head you can say determined by the static lift of the pump. So, today we will discuss the rate of delivery. Now, if you see uh, a pump, a reciprocating pump in its simplest form, you see that during the suction stroke when the piston or the plunger moves from IDC to ODC in this direction, the pressure falls below that in the sum. So, the liquid comes through this inlet or suction pipe to the cylinder. So, therefore, during this stroke when the crank moves 180 degree, there is no flow in the delivery line. That means, the delivery is 0. That means, the flow in the delivery is 0. When the piston starts the delivery stroke or starts this motion from ODC to IDC in that direction. So, it pushes the liquid. The pressure is immediately sensed at this point considering the liquid to be incompressible that we have recognized earlier and then the delivery valve opens and the delivery takes place. So, this type of pump is known as a single acting single cylinder obviously this is one cylinder single cylinder single acting pump. So, therefore, if we plot the rate of delivery versus the crank angle that means, this is the delivery axis the rate of delivery we will see that first 180 degree revolution that means, if we plot it with respect to crank angle on abscissa. So, 0 degree is the angle that crank measured from the inner dead center position. So, 0 to 180 this represents the suction stroke there is 0 delivery. So, delivery takes place only in the delivery stroke from 180 to 360. And as you have noticed the velocity in the delivery pipe varies periodically because of the acceleration and deceleration head where it is 0 and then it goes on increasing attains the maximum the mid of the stroke considering a simple harmonic motion of the piston and simultaneously of the liquid column in the delivery pipe. So, therefore, the velocity follows this sinusoidal distribution and similarly the delivery that is the flow rate that means here we can write the flow rate q dot. So, th therefore, we see the delivery occurs only from 180 degree to 360 degree angle of rotation for the crank and that is also a non-uniform delivery. Now, this can be eliminated that means to make a continuous delivery this is not a continuous delivery. So, it is intermittent delivery that means again another 360 to 540 there will be a suction and again there will be a delivery. So, this delivery will be intermittent. So, to make a continuous delivery a type is used known as double acting single cylinder pump. That means, what happens here this cylinder is single, but the delivery and suction takes place in both the sides the connection is like that. Which means that if we consider this as the IDC, IDC and let this as the ODC. That means, when the piston moves from IDC to ODC this side the suction takes place whereas, this side the liquid for the liquid in this side of the piston the delivery takes place. That means, when the piston moves from IDC to ODC the suction valve here or the inlet valve opens at the same time the delivery valve opens here. That means, this is suction for the liquid in this side of the piston and delivery for the liquid in this side that means, the right side of the piston this phase. So, therefore, delivery takes place in both the strokes while this is a suction stroke for the liquid in this side the delivery takes place through this line. Similarly, when the piston moves from ODC to IDC, the delivery valves here opens and the liquid here flows through the delivery. So, it is simultaneously executing both the delivery and the suction strokes in both 0 to 180 degree rotations of the crank. So, therefore, you see in a double acting machine, we can just get a diagram of this type. That means, from 0 to 180 there is a de delivery <coughs> with a sinusoidal variation because of non-uniformity in the flow because of the acceleration and deceleration of the piston 
and similarly this is there from 180 to 360. Therefore, we can improve the delivery from an intermittent one to a continuous one, but still the delivery is non-uniform. Now, the non-uniformity in the delivery can be eliminated if we use multi-cylinder pumps, but multi-cylinder pumps if we use two cylinder pumps, two cylinder here where the reciprocating motion of the piston is executed by 180 degree phase lag here 180 degree phase lag, a two cylinder with 180 degree phase lag. Unfortunately, this does not remove the non-uniformity, why? This gives the same diagram, why? This is because when suction for one cylinder will be the delivery for other cylinder and vice versa. So, a superimposition of these two gives the similar thing, but if we use three cylinder, if we use three cylinder pump, let us consider equally spaced that means 120 degree within the crank angle that means 120 degree apart from one another three cylinder such we can get relatively a uniform discharge. If you follow this let this cylinder 1, 2, 3. Now, if you draw the diagram with respect to the angle made by the piston of the first cylinder with respect to its inner dead center position then you see from 0 to 180 is the suction. So, therefore, this is a superimposition. So, red one is the first cylinder. So, red one gives the discharge for the first cylinder from 180 to 360. Well, the second cylinder, they, it starts its suction at 120 degree with respect to the first cylinder. So, from 120 to 300, that is 180 degree of crank rotation, there will be suction for the second cylinder. While from 300 to 120 this side, that means it is 300 plus 180. So, it will be the discharge. That means, first 60 degree, 300 to 360, this will be the part of the discharge curve, 60 degree, then for another 120 degree, this is the discharge curve. So, this will be maximum here, which is 30 degree. So, this two curve, it represents this part and this part is the discharge curve for second cylinder. And similarly, 120 to 300 is the suction for the second cylinder, very simple. For the third cylinder, which is 120 degree apart phase lag from the second one. So, that will be 0 120 plus 120 240. So, this suction starts from 240 and it will go up to this point 60 degree here the 240 plus 180. Well, so 120 this side and 60 again it comes back 60. So, from 60 it starts its delivery stroke. So, this one is the delivery of the third cylinder. So, if you now superimpose this delivery curve this one this one and this one and we show it from 0 to 360 degree of crank revolution with respect to the first cylinder, then we get a continuous curve like that, a more or less continuous curve. That means, discharge becomes more or less uniform if we use more number of cylinder. If you if we use large number of cylinders, this non-uniformity will go down almost we will get a straight curve. So, therefore, we conclude that the rate of delivery may be made uniform in spite of the deceleration and acceleration of the pistons provided we use number of cylinders in line with some phase lag of their reciprocating motion, execution of their reciprocating motion. All right, <coughs> next, so next is a very important phenomena that air vessel, application of air vessel, what is an air vessel? application of air vessel in a reciprocating pump, procating pump. Now, we have seen that until and unless we use a multi cylinder engine pumps, we have for a single cylinder what we have? We have an intermittent discharge and discharge is non-uniform. Okay? So, to make the discharge uniform for a single cylinder, air vessels are used in delivery and suction side. What is this? Let me draw the diagram first for air vessel.
these are a r facet it is very simple ok. Now, what is done? What is an air vessel? Now, to make the basic purpose is to make the discharge uniform in the delivery line, air vessels are used. Of course, it has multi functions that I will come ultimately, we will arrive at that conclusion. So, air vessels are large vessels or large container closed at one end with compressed air inside it, with air inside it, which is attached to both delivery and suction lines very close to the cylinder. So, it should not be attached somewhere here, as close as possible to the cylinder. So, that this lens of the delivery and suction pipes from the cylinder to the air vessels are as small as possible. Now, what happens? It is very simple. These air vessels work as a flywheel, similar to that of a flywheel in a machine. So, it takes the extra air from the mean discharge, ex sorry, extra water from the mean discharge when it is more than the mean discharge and it gives water when the mean, when the water flowing to the delivery or suction pipe is less than the mean discharge. Let us understand this. Now, first of all, we have to find out, we have to, under, we have to understand that the delivery in the first delivery side, we consider the delivery side, the flow is not uniform. It is sometimes more, sometimes less. If we find out a uniform flow rate, uniform flow rate can be found out by finding out the volume swept. Now, let the stroke length is L which is, is equal to 2 times the crank radius and if the cross sectional area of the piston is A. So, this is the volume swept per unit per one cycle. So, if I know the omega the crank revolutionary speed, we can tell the rate of volume flow is L A into <coughs> omega by 2 pi. This is the volume swept by the piston. This is an average volume flow rate. So, if this volume flow rate divide, we divided it by the cross sectional area of the delivery pipe, let A D, then we get the average velocity of flow. But this velocity of flow varies in the delivery because of the acceleration and deceleration. So, that the flow rate through the delivery pipe and simultaneously through the suction pipe varies. What happens? What is the principle of operation for air vessel? Now, let us consider the delivery side. When the flow is very high. That means, flow is more than this mean discharge or mean flow, then the pressure here is more. So, what happens when the pressure here is more, the liquid rushes to the air vessels. So, the pressure of the air is so adjusted that it must equate to a pressure at here, which corresponds to the mean discharge. So, therefore, whenever the discharge is more than the mean discharge, when it happens at the beginning of the delivery stroke, okay, that when the piston starts from its ODC. So, pressure here is more, so that the discharge is more than the mean discharge. The discharge rises, there is an acceleration, that means the flow rate increases. So, for the, during that period, the extra water flows out, flows into the air vessel. So, pressure is going down, which means that from this part onwards, the flow is reduced and ultimately brought down to this value. The reverse happens that during the subsequent deceleration part, that is the latter part of the delivery stroke, when the flow rate is less than the mean discharge, that means deceleration takes place, the flow rate decreases. So, therefore, the pressure here is reduced. The air pressure is so adjusted that when the pressure here is reduced, the accumulated water in the air vessel rushes and joins here, so that the flow becomes more than the reduced flow and ultimately flows through the delivery pipe. So, here a constant pressure is maintained to supply a constant flow through the delivery pipe from the air vessel onwards to the overhead tank. So, here we get a constant Q mean that is this value which is constant. That means, this way the air vessel either supplies water or absorbs water to maintain a uniform flow rate through the delivery pipe from the air vessel connections onwards. Similar thing happens for the air vessel in the suction side. Try to understand what happens in the suction side. At the initial stage, when this piston moves from I D C, then what happens? Due to the acceleration of the piston, the suction pressure falls below that of the, the ideal or theoretical suction pressure determined by the height of the uh, pump from the sump level, this height. So, therefore, what happens? 
more liquid the pressure here falls. So, liquid from the sum comes at a rate which is more than the mean discharge. But what happens when the pressure here falls to a value lower than that of the theoretical suction pressure, then the water from this air vessel also comes because the flow takes place in the, this direction. So, which increases the pressure at this point, so that from the sum it takes the flow rate which is Q mean. That means, a reduced value, not a high value. Similarly, at the subsequent part of the or the latter part of the suction stroke, when the pressure here increases, then the flow rate decreases to the suction pipe. But what happens when there is an air vessel, the pressure rises here. So, therefore, water again goes to the air vessel, so that the same amount of flow is taken from the sum by the suction pipe. So, therefore, this part of through this part of the suction pipe, always a uniform flow comes from the sum. Similarly, this part of the delivery pipe always a uniform flow comes through the delivery pipe. So, therefore, if you look as a whole to the pump, you see that the incorporation of these two air vessels makes the flow through this part of the delivery pipe and through this part of the suction pipe almost constant and this is equal to the mean discharge. The discharge or flow rate varies only in this part of the delivery and suction pipe that is from the air vessel to the cylinder. Since this part is very small because the air vessels are connected very close to the cylinder, the fluctuations take place only in the small part of the tube. That also does not create any serious danger from the stress consideration. So, therefore, we get almost a uniform discharge to the delivery pipe and a uniform flow rate to the larger part of the suction pipe. So, what advantages do we get from here? First advantage you see let us first write that advantages from suction side, suction side. What advantage we get? Advantages. So, distinct advantages, suction side, we see that now suction side as we have seen earlier in our diagram uh, for head discharge diagram that this pressure E falls below that of A. This is H s rho g, this is the ideal or theoretical suction pressure, which is determined by this height of the pump above the sump level. Now, because of the acceleration, if there was no acceleration, the pressure minimum pressure in the pump was this. So, therefore, it is only the height of the pump, which should be the criteria to determine the cavitation. You understand this? Okay? Any? Okay? But because of this acceleration, at the beginning of the suction stroke that we explained in the last class, I explained the pressure falls here E. So, therefore, the speed of the pump I told in the last class is restricted because of the cavitation, because if the speed is more, the acceleration will be more at the beginning of the suction stroke. So, therefore, pressure E that point E will go still below that means the minimum pressure in the pump will go down that should not go below the vapor pressure of the working fluid at the existing temperature. So, therefore, here we see when the acceleration and deceleration is coming into picture, then the minimum pressure point goes down, so that the cavitation there is likelihood for the cavitation to occur. So, here we see when we put the air vessel very close to the cylinder, so this pressure, this point goes very close to that. So, this minimum point pressure is boosted high, which is corros which corresponds to the mean discharge pressure. So, therefore, the likelihood of cavitation is avoided. So, the first advantage is the cavitation may be avoided, cavitation may be avoided. So, cavitation may be avoided is related to what? Cavitation may be avoided means we can go for a higher speed of the pump, higher speed of the pump. That means, even at the higher speed, these are interrelated, the cavitation may not be there if we use an air vessel in the suction side. Similarly, higher length, higher length, higher length of the suction pipe we can use. These are the important things from the practical point of view. So, we can use a higher length of the suction pipe, we can go for a higher speed of the pump, so that the head developed will be more without cavitation, without the likelihood of cavitation to occur. Similarly, in the delivery side, what we get advantage? Delivery side, the first advantage is what? First advantage, 
uniform discharge, uniform or constant discharge, uniform or constant discharge, almost uniform or constant discharge. Because whatever is the variation of discharge in this part of the pipe, it is smoothened out by the flow of water in either direction from air vessel to delivery pipe or delivery pipe to air vessel to make the flow in the latter part to be almost constant. And another very important thing is that less power, because a large amount of power is eliminated which was consumed to accelerate the liquid mass. Here the acceleration of liquid take place for this amount of liquid mass. So, larger length of the delivery pipe the liquid is not accelerated. So, a large amount of power is saved which was earlier consumed to provide the acceleration head to a large amount of liquid mass. That means, it is the liquid mass in the entire delivery tube. So, therefore, less power requirement, okay? less power requirement. So, these are the advantages for incorporation of or for incorporating the air vessels in a reciprocating pump. We mainly get the uniform discharge, we can increase the speed of the pump with avoiding cavitation, we can use the higher length of the suction pipe which means that we can place the pump at a higher height from the sum. So, we can location of the pump may, may be made at a higher height from the sum and at the delivery side a uniform discharge and less power requirement. Now, let us find out a very simple analytical expression for the flow of water from air vessels. Now, you see what is the mean discharge? Mean discharge if we write, I have seen that the length that the stroke length, stroke length I earlier also that means the same thing that is this is the mean discharge stroke length into area of the piston area of cylinder or same thing area of cylinder. This is the swept volume, volume swept by the piston in one revolution. So, in terms of time that means the flow rate per unit time we multiply with omega by t. Now, stroke length in terms of the crank radius is 2 r obvious because it 2 radius movement of the crank, this executes one stroke. That means, this stroke is the distance between IDC to ODC, this is 2 R, that means half revolution of the crank. So, this is the crank radius. Well, so therefore, 2 R into A, let A is the area of the cylinder into omega by 2 pi. So, this is the mean discharge based on the swept volume of the cylinder. But what is the instantaneous discharge? If you remember the instantaneous velocity in cylinder or in delivery pipe, what was the instantaneous velocity in the delivery pipe? V by A by A into R, what is that? R omega cos, cos or sin, sin omega t. Okay? r omega sin omega t, all right. So, this is the instantaneous discharge. So, therefore, the difference between the instantaneous discharge and this is the instantaneous velocity, not the discharge, okay. then it will be multiplied with the area. This is the instantaneous velocity. Okay. So, the instantaneous discharge is a r omega sin. So, therefore, V minus Q dot will be A R omega sin omega t minus A, A sorry minus A R omega by pi. Clear? This was the velocity of the piston R omega sin omega t. This we developed just to recapitulate this, see this that there is any mistake. X is equal to r minus r cos theta. This is the displacement of the piston from the inner dead center position after a time t from when the piston moves by an angle theta from its inner dead center position. So, dx dt is the displacement of the piston r omega sin omega t and we have assumed that this is the velocity with which the liquid in the piston also moves. So, therefore, 
the velocity in the delivery pipe will be from the continuity principle A by A. Again, you multiply with A, we get the flow rate or simply we can find out the rate of flow as this, which will be same for both in the cylinder and the piston. So, this value only we have written here. So, this can be written as A r omega. Let us put theta as the omega t, which is the instantaneous crank angle. Now, you see an interesting thing. So, the <coughs> sign of this quantity will depend upon the value of theta. It may be greater than 0, it may be less than 0. When it is greater than 0, means the mean velocity or the instantaneous, oh sorry, this is not the instantaneous velocity, then it is the instantaneous flow rate. So, I have written V and again I have made it Q, there is some problem. So, it is instantaneous Q. So, this part is the instantaneous V. Okay. So, when it is greater than 0, means the instantaneous flow is more than the mean flow. That means, the liquid goes to the air vessel. When it is less than 0, means the mean flow is less than the actual flow. Sorry, when it is greater than 0, means the actual flow is that means, Q is greater than Q dot. That means, the actual flow is more than the mean flow. That means, the water flows to the air vessel. When it is less than 0, the mean flow is less than the, the instantaneous flow is less than the mean flow. Q dot mean rather, you write. This is mean, otherwise difficult. So, when it is greater than 0, then Q dot is greater than Q dot mean. That means, the water flows to the air vessel. When it is less than 0, Q dot is less than Q dot mean. That means, the air water comes from the air vessel. The most interesting part is that when sin theta is 1 by pi, when sin theta is equal to 1 by pi, then this, this gives two angle, theta is, uh, is some 16 degree. Uh, no, theta is some 18 degree or some minute, 34 minute or like that and another is 161 degree, 26 minute like that. I will verify it. It is approximately this angle, this gives. That means, sin theta is 1 by pi gives two angles of theta between 0 to 360 degree. At those two crank angles, the instantaneous value coincides with the mean value. There is no flow of water either to the air vessel or from the air vessel. Well, there is no flow. So, corresponding to this equation, sin theta is 1 by pi. It is almost equal to 18 degree, another is equal to 161 degree. That you can see from the trigonometric table, is approximate values like that. So, this is the mathematical part for the air vessel. So, you can very well understand what air vessel does. It just supplies the surplus air when it is needed. That means, the instantaneous flow rate is less than the mean flow. Or it absorbs or takes the excess surplus air when the instantaneous flow is more than the mean flow. Well, any question? Please, any question? Power requirement will be less in this case. Power requirement will be less. We are using power extra power to compress the air in the air vessel also. No, the compressed the air in the air vessel we do not require. So, initially the air, correct, initially the air was compressed and put into the air vessel by making a pressure equal to that so that it equalizes. The design characteristics of this air vessel is that the air vessel is very large compared to the cross sectional area of this delivery pipe and this cylinder. So, that expansion and compression of the air does not change its pressure, the pressure remains almost constant. So, initially you have to fill with the compressed air and that pressure remains almost constant. It is very large, 10 times larger in area than the area of the delivery pipes or the suction pipes. The air vessel is a large area. So, that Initially, you fill it with some compressed air, predetermined pressure. So, expansion, little expansion and contraction of the pressure by the movement of the liquid column, that the height of the liquid, it increases or decreases, does not change the pressure much. That is one of the very important characteristics feature for the design of air vessel. It will be large, like a search tank in a compressor. As you see, the search tank in a compressor, you have seen, is very big. Air compressor also does the same thing. So, the discharge becomes uniform when it comes from a search tank. Never air is taken directly from the delivery line of a compressor. It is taken from the search tank. The search tank volume is much more than the volume of the cylinder of the reciprocating <coughs> compressors. Same principle here. Okay. Next, I just like to uh, tell you is a straightforward application, no doubt. 
straightforward application of these principles, then one problem you see. Example, how to solve this problem? A single acting, you write, example, a single acting reciprocating pump, a single acting reciprocating pump having cylinder diameter of 150 millimeter is used to raise the water through a height of 20 meter. So, diameter of cylinder is 150 millimeter and is used to raise the water through a height of 20 millimeter. So, 20 millimeter is the total height that is the static lift that is HS plus HD from the sum to the overhead reservoir. This is the total height. These are the important dimension. Cylinder diameter. Its crank rotates at 60 rpm that is the revolutionary speed is 60 rpm. Find the theoretical discharge and theoretical power required to run the pump. First is the theoretical discharge and theoretical power. Theoretical discharge and theoretical power is related to the power and discharge which neglects the acceleration and decelerations of the piston. Next part is if delivery pipe is 100 millimeter in diameter that is the diameter of the delivery pipe and 15 meter long that means length and diameter of the delivery pipe is given. Find the acceleration head at the beginning of the delivery stroke, straightforward application of the equations. We know the RPM, we know the length and diameter, we can find out the acceleration head at the beginning of the delivery stroke which is maximum which is maximum at the beginning of the stroke. That means, the power developed has to be much more than that of the 20 meter for pumping if you take care of the acceleration head. Next part, it tells if large air vessel, the word large is very important. That means, the pressure in of the air in the air vessel remains constant substantially. Air vessel is fitted very close. If it is not large in this context, I tell this is an approximation. That is why there will be a little fluctuations in the discharge. If it is theoretically constant, that means it is always maintain a constant pressure at that point where the air vessel was connected to the delivery pipe. So, it does not maintain so because of the fluctuation in the air pressure. That is why there is a little fluctuation in the discharge in the delivery pipe from the air vessel connections onwards. Okay. If large air vessel is fitted very close to the cylinder on delivery side, very simple find the theoretical velocity in delivery pipe. This theoretical velocity is no way connected with this large air vessel. This is already known from the Swift volume. But more Im most important is the and the pressure rate in cylinder necessary to overcome friction in delivery pipe. Take F is equal to 0, 0.0 and this is typical Darcy's friction coefficient. Find the rate of flow next part from or to air vessel when crank makes angles of 30, 90, 120. That is the straightforward application of the equations that we have described from inner dead center position. I think all of you can solve this problem. There is no need of discussing this problem. Theoretical discharge is simply the swept volume per revolution. You convert it in terms of time. Okay. All right. So, I think you can solve the problem. Well, find the rate of flow from or to air vessel when crank makes angles of 30 degree, 90 degree and 120 degree from inner dead center position. All right? Okay. Now, okay? Now, theoretical discharge, Q dot theoretical, what will be? Is what is the area of the cylinder? Pi d square, pi into 150 millimeter meter square d square by 4 into the stroke length. What is the stroke length? Stroke length is given. What is the stroke length? Huh? Stroke length is not given. Huh? What R is given? What is that? Pump having cylinder diameter of 150 is used to raise the water through a height of 20 meter. Its crank rotates at 60 rpm. Find the theoretical discharge and theoretical power required. You just see it to run the pump. If delivery pipe is 100 millimeter in diameter and 15 meter long, find the. So, stroke length is not given. So, stroke length has to be given. 
I am sorry, the stroke length is omitted, so stroke length has to be given, otherwise you cannot find it. What is? No, no, length of the cylinder cannot be the stroke length, there will be a clearance volume, inner dead, outer dead, length of the cylinder, where is the length of the cylinder? Where is length of cylinder? Not given, length of cylinder is not the stroke length, I am sorry, should not tell like that. So, stroke length has to be given, this is missing in the problem, this data, well, just you see the procedure, then you can find out your 60 rpm, that means 60 by 60, that means 1 revolution per second, so this will be the Q dot theoretical meter cube per second. Power theoretical is what? Rho Q dot theoretical G into H. What is this H? This is 20. H is equal to 20. I am sorry that stroke length is missing is a data. However, if stroke length is given, you can find out. So, delivery pi if the acceleration head, as you know, what is the expression of acceleration head? What is the expression of acceleration head, please? L d by g, next is a d by capital A and then r omega square cos omega t. Okay. Capital A in the numerator and small a in the denominator. Okay. So, at the beginning means delivery stroke, so this will be 1, 180 cos theta, cos 0, 1. So, this will be L d by g, you see that a by a d omega square. So, you can find out, well, if large air vessel is fitted very close to the cylinder, it is the concept that theoretical velocity will be the theoretical discharge divided by the, what is theoretical velocity in delivery pipe is theoretical discharge divided by the cross sectional area of the delivery pipe. Can it be found? Delivery pipe diameter is given 100 millimeter, that means 0.1 meter into 0.1 square into 4. So, if I know Q theoretical, this is the V theoretical, the theoretical velocity and find out the pressure rate in cylinder necessary to overcome friction in delivery pipe. When this air vessel is incorporated, then the theoretical velocity is this and that will be the velocity in the delivery pipe, uniform velocity. So, therefore, H f is f L d by d d, the diameter of the delivery pipe into V theoretical, this V theoretical square by 2 g. So, this will be the frictional head head required to overcome the friction because the velocity is uniform. Okay. But in other cases, you will have to integrate it taking care of the varying heads. I am telling this is a very simple problem. Okay. Thank you. Time is up.